before we start. How many speakers have you seen come up with a frozen notebook? <laughs> frozen notebook? Frozen notebook. Is it the kids or yours? Yeah, huh? No, it's not mine. <laughs> he pays. No, it's not, sure. <laughs> I know that half the congregation is the worship team, but we can we just pay honour where honour is due and give them a round of applause. What talent. Please come on. We are so blessed to have a worship team like we do. There's no other church around here like this church. So this morning I want to give you four keys to get you passionate for the church because there's been many times where I've come into church and I've been disheartened by the amount of people here. And we're lucky this morning, we have got we have got a fair few. But when I walked in and there was only the worship team, I thought, oof, you know, I'm just gonna preach to the worship team. But thank you for coming. It means a lot. And um, so four keys to get passionate for the church. And you know one thing that I've learned is power from God always follows passion. And there's all sorts of, of stories throughout the Bible that show power following passion. Yeah. And I was thinking about, in the Bible, the, the story of the, the woman with the issue of blood. And she was an outcast in society and Jesus was, was walking through, through and, and she battled her way through the crowds just to touch his garment. And you know what happened when she touched that garment, she got healed. Amen. Power following passion. Yeah. And you want God to do a miracle in your life, then we've got to we've got to step, get stared up from the belly for God's power. Are you with me? Amen. Yes. So I want to give you four points, four keys to get passionate for the church. Number one, you must understand that you are valuable. Every one of you are valuable in your time. You know, maybe you've come to that part of your life, maybe you've, you've battled through some circumstances and maybe you don't feel valuable at all. You may feel quite low about yourself. You may feel broken. You might be carrying guilt. You might be feeling worthless. But to be passionate for the church, this needs to change. In John 3.16, a well-known verse, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You know, God sent his son for you this morning. I don't know how you feel, but God loves you. You're not on this planet by accident. God has made you in his image. There is nobody on this planet like you. You've been created by him. And in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. You are his chosen people. Whether you know it right now or not, you are, his, you are chosen by God. You know, you're not in this room by accident. You know, you might not believe in yourself, you know, but that has to change this morning. Because if you don't believe in yourself, how can you be, be good to anybody? You must value yourself and your body. You know, the Bible teaches us that our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. We have to protect that. You know, the enemy will, will whisper things and he'll, he'll tell you lies and he'll tell you you're not good and he'll play on your weaknesses. But we know that the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. You know, the devil is a liar and he will, will try and rob you of your value, your confidence. You know, who you are, you are valuable. You have a very important part to play in this picture of winning seat. Now everyone has a different gift, different talents. You know, and I want to encourage you to use them for God. It's not just about the upfront gifts. It's not just about the worship. It's not just about the speakers. You know, you might be gifted in creativity, art, writing, listening, counseling. You know, you might be full of wisdom, poetry, administration. Sadly, Annette's not here, but, you know, British Bake Off champion, mm -hmm. always comes to, to church looking her finest. Mm -hmm. 
but she is the wisest person I know and she she's the biggest encourager I know mm. Sue another one sadly not here yeah. no she makes the best cup of coffee mm. but my wife my wife tells me that she gives the best hugs mm. and her prayers they carry power they Dave they can not only sh shred on the guitar you know he's a fantastic listener me and him have, have sat with a beer for many hours and he's such a good listener and he's got servant's heart Jane she's humble enough to say you know I'm not very good on the, on the saxophone which we all know is a lie <laughs> you know but she's got a carer's heart yeah. she's so selfish she'll do anything for anybody Don an amazing worshipper you know but one of the funniest people I know you know, he's setting up a, a praise and, and soup night. You know, he's got a passion for the community here in Withensee. And Abby, you know, she's not only married, an amazing, handsome guy. I am. But God's given her a voice to open hearts. And did you know that, that Abby is, she's written some of the best poetry I've ever read? You know, you all have a role to play. Don't be something that you're not called to be. Don't undervalue your role. And that's my first point. Value yourself. You are valuable. And you want to be passionate for the church. You need to understand how valuable you are. Key number two, to be passionate for the church, you need to have love for others. The church is all about people. And the moment you accept Jesus into your heart, you, you say yes to loving people. Jesus was all about people. Throughout the Gospels, throughout the teachings and the stories, Jesus, it's always Jesus and people. One of my favourites is John 8, and it's the woman caught in the very act of adultery. And it says that she was caught in the act, and the Pharisees pulled her out in front of all the people and in front of Jesus. And they questioned Jesus, what, what should we do with this woman? And you know what I love about Jesus? She was on the floor and the Bible says that he bent down. You know, what I've learned is that, that Jesus, he got down to her level. He didn't stand above her all high and mighty and rebuke her. It says that he bent down. You know, he got down to her. He didn't have to do that, but he did it because his heart was full of love. His heart was full of compassion. And you know, we need to do the same. We've got to reach people where they're at. You know, we live in a broken world and we can stand high and mighty and holier than now. But we've got to reach down and we've got to pull them up and we've got, we've got to do what the church has been called to do. You know, we, we all have something to give, whether you don't know Jesus yet or you've known him for 60, 70 years, you still have something to give. You may not think it, but you do. You know, you can start with your testimony. Testimony is a powerful, powerful thing. You don't have to have been to hell and back to have an amazing testimony. You may have been brought up in the church and have been a Christian from a young age. You know, everybody's been through things. God's got every one of us out of a sticky situation. Yeah. You know, each of us, we can reach out to different people. I like to call it our sphere of influence. You know, a circle of influence. You know, who are the people in your world? Who are your friends? Who are your family? Who are your neighbours? You know, who do you work with? Who is in your circle? You know, all those people around you, God has called you to them. So you need to take a stand in, in what you believe. People need Jesus. And if you don't tell them, who will? You know, if, you're, if, if it's your saved day to day or, or you've been saved for many years, you know, you've got to be bold. No, one, no one's ever too young or too, too far gone to be able to hear the gospel. When I was younger, I worked in a care home and um, there was an elderly lady there. And we got chatting and, and conversation she soon, soon changed, uh, turned to religion. And her name was Myrna and it was quite a convenient name. <laughs> and she was she was a Christian already and um, but one conversation she said to me do you know what Matt I've, I've never heard God spoken about like that and I left that room on, on cloud nine it, it really did lift me 
And I got thinking about another story last night. And before me and Abby met, I lived on a in a council flat for six years. And my neighbour down below was an he was an ex drug addict. And he abused drugs so much that he, he actually damaged every vein in his body. To the extent that doctors had to take bloods from between his toes. He had no teeth, he had tattoos on his neck, he smoked weed. Yeah, we, we became friends. And I would visit him every day just to just to crack his boredom after work and we'd talk about many, many things and, and we'd talk about, about God. And most of the time I, I just felt like he was entertaining me. Oftentimes he would he would usher me off, but I I eventually managed to convince him to come to church with me. And he enjoyed listening to, to me preach and sadly he he ended up in hospital, he had to have a, a quite a long stay in hospital. And when he came home, I was thrilled to see a Bible sat next to him. And it was open and it, it, it had been read. And he told me he'd got it from the hospital and he'd been reading it throughout his hospital stay. Now I don't condole stealing, but if he was gonna steal anything, let it be a Bible. Apparently the Bible is the most stolen book in history. Apparently thieves missed out, thou shalt not steal part of the Ten Commandments. But let me tell you, no one is too far gone for the gospel. Make yourself available. You know, you've been called to be the light of the world. You know, you've got to shine for Jesus. In Matthew, it tells us that, that we are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. And that is the church's responsibility. You know, you have to be the beacon of this community. You have to be the light of Withensee. The church is a light and, and guess what? You are the light of the church. Don't conform to the ways of the world. Make a decision that you're gonna live for others. Like I said, number one, you have to understand that you are valuable. Number two, you have to have love for others. And number three, are you awake, Egan? You all right, bud? <laughs> I'm boring you. If you have passion for the church, number three, you need to be committed to the vision. You know, you need to get behind the leaders and the pastors and their vision for this church. God has gifted them as leaders. You know, the leaders of, of Gateway have a vision for this church. And you need to decide whether you're committed to help building what, what they want to build, what God has told them for this area. And if you don't know what the vision is, then, then please talk to Tim. You know, vision determines where you're going. It's a key, it's it's a key part to any church. A vision is bigger than you and I. You know, it's about living for the cause. And you need to sell out for that vision. You know, if 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 Tim asks you to do something, or one of the other leaders asks you to do something, just do it. Share sure serving heart. In Psalm, and I want to read Psalm one, verse three. And it says, and he shall be planted, uh, and he will be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth fruit, that uh, bringeth forth fruit, his fruit in his season. Yeah. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. You know, I want to be that tree. God wants you to be like that tree. God doesn't want you to wither. God wants you to flourish. And you will flourish when you apply yourself to the house of God. You know, what do you want to, to flourish in your life? You need to get plugged into the church. You need to have that servant's heart. You know, I read the verse of, of Colossians 3, verse 23. And it says, and whatsoever you do, do it heartedly. As to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you re will receive the reward of inheritance for you serve the, the Lord Christ. You know, I, I wanna serve God. I hope every one of us in here today wants to serve God. And I know that God wants you to serve him and he has an inheritance for you. My goodness, what, what does an inheritance from God look like? You know, it's pretty big what God's got to give to you. 
You need to have that servant's heart. God will do things through you when you serve him in the church. You know, there's no hierarchy in serving, no ranking in serving. He sees everything as equal. You know, um, everything is just as significant. So can I encourage you, if you want to be passionate for the church, then you need to serve him. And let me read you Ephesians 6 verse 7. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know the Lord will reward each and every uh, each and everything that you do. So there it is again. God has something for you. Will you hold it in your hands? Do you want to see God do something in your life? Then get committed to the vision of the church. Have you have a, a very significant part to play in this vision? So go the extra mile, it'll be worth it, success will come. So my point number one was value yourself. Number two, that you look outwards to others. And number three, to be committed to the vision. And my last and final point, and this is my favorite point, to be passionate for the church, you've got to believe in the impossible. Mark 9:23. I've got to read this to you. It's powerful stuff. It says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible in him that believes. Everything is possible for him that believes. And the message, I love the message Bible. It says, Jesus said ifs. There are not ifs among believers. Anything can happen. Mark eleven twenty four says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. You know, that fires me up. Whatever you ask for in prayer, just believe. You know, we've got to do that for the church. We've got to, we've got to believe for this church. You know, what do you want to see happen in this church? You know, I want to see two services in the morning. No, do you want to see people queuing down the street just to get into this place? No, I want to see a miracle for God. I want to see that in this church. I want to see people fighting just to get in the presence of God. I don't know what you believe in or in your life, but let me encourage you that, that you need to believe big. I dare you to believe in the impossible. Because we serve an incredible God. We serve an awesome God. No, we serve a supernatural God. We we may live in a natural world, but we serve a supernatural God. You know, let God add super to your natural. Let God add super to your natural this morning. And you've got to believe that this morning. He's a miracle working God. He's a supernatural God. You know, every time you pray, heaven moves. Heaven moves for you. God God moves to answer your prayer. I promise you that. It might take time, but God's got to work some things out before he can give you your miracle. So get excited about coming to church. Be expectant for God to move in your life. You know, bring your friends. Bring your family. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus couldn't do miracles where there was no faith. If you want to see miracles in this church, then you need to bring your faith. God will work with you. God is moving this morning. And God God wants to work in your heart. He wants a generation to to stand up and be passionate for his cry. Amen. 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 Let's pray. God, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this church. And I want to thank you for everybody in this room. I want to pray for this town. God, I pray that this this church will be filled to the rafters, that we will need a second service on a Sunday morning. God, I pray for my friends that are here right now. Show them what their calling is in this church. Lord, I thank you for the, the commitment of the people here today. When things got rough, they didn't run and hide. They stayed strong and continued to be faithful in your house. Thank you for being an awesome God. For the word said, if God is with us, who can be against us? 
Father, I love you and I thank you for the works that you're doing in my life. I pray that you have your hand on everybody here today and we would leave different to how we walked in. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen.